Good morning, I'm Kristen Bandy with Arkansas Children's. Today we are at the Arkansas Children's Hospital Pine Bluff Clinic talking, talking to Dr. Elser, a pediatric headache management specialist. Good morning, thank you for being here. Good morning, thanks for having me. It's Migraine Awareness Month, and as we, we were just talking about the misconceptions about headaches and migraines, so it's the perfect month to talk about that and clear up some of the things that we may be thinking that aren't actually accurate. I agree with that. You know, the, we, we have run the headache clinic at Children's now for 35 years, and we've seen thousands and thousands of kids with headaches. And I think there are a lot of misconceptions about headaches in kids. Probably the first one is, is that kids can't have headaches. Yeah. And, and I know as a migraine sufferer myself that that is absolutely not true. There, there are, as, as I always talk about, myths of headaches in, in both kids and adults. The primary myth that I see is everyone that I've ever seen for headaches goes to the eye doctor first thinking eye problems cause headaches. And there is no evidence that that's the case. You go along things like allergies cause headaches, sinus disease cause headaches, foods cause headaches. Those are all what I describe as myths of headaches. The reason, the reason people have headaches is, <clears throat> excuse me, because there is a headache gene. Just like there's an asthma gene, a cancer gene, a diabetes gene, there is a headache gene. Everyone I've ever seen for headaches, I can promise you, there's a parent, grandparent, aunt and uncle, someone with headaches. So if you have that genetic predisposition to headaches, and you have allergies that are terribly under control, if you don't eat the right diet, if you don't hydrate, your headaches are gonna be worse, right. but those things don't cause headaches. Right. They may be a factor, but they don't cause headaches. Now you mentioned that food is a common trigger, but it's not scientifically a trigger. And the, the, if, you, if, you look at, if you look at studies of foods and migraine, there are very, very few good studies. No one has ever taken food stuff versus placebo and done something prospectively. Everything that we, and, and again, a migraine stuff for myself, when I get a headache, I always think, what did I eat? What did I do? Oh, I ate chocolate. Oh, I drank a Coke. Mm -hmm. It must be the caffeine. And yet right. I eat chocolate and drink Coke all the time and never don't always get headaches. Right. So, it's, it's really, one of the, there are a lot of frustrating things about headaches. We'd all love to say, if I quit doing this or I quit eating this, mm -hmm. I'll never have another headache. The problem is there are hundreds of triggers for headaches and you can't fix them all. We just wish there was an easy fix. We you wish know, it was I wish easy. I could give the chocolate up and never have another Absolutely. headache. I don't think I could give the chocolate up, honestly. And I but, wouldn't. Right, I wouldn't. same, and a Coke. Uh, so let's, let's talk about kids and migraines. How common is it for kids to get actual real bona fide migraines. So you, the, you talk about the adult literature that it's, it's felt somewhere, and I think this is an underestimation, that about 20, 25% of women and five, 10% of men suffer from migraine. And I think that's absolutely true with kids as well. Part of the problem is there is no test for migraine. Migraine is based on an awareness mm -hmm. of symptoms that a child has. Yeah. What, what we've seen over the years is that young kids, especially being poor historians, will have a headache or they'll have vomiting. They'll go to the doctor and they say, oh, you have a sinus infection. Oh, yeah. you have a stomach virus. And in reality, if the kid could really tell what was going right. on, they would probably fit criteria for migraine. So a migraine headache by definition is a headache that's moderate to severe in intensity lasts somewhere between four and 72 hours associated either with nausea or vomiting or light and noise sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to make a diagnosis, I have to have a child tell me what they experience. A two-year-old can't tell right. me that. And yet our youngest patient we've ever diagnosed has been nine months old. Wow. And it was a nine month old who would have very typical, they would be fine and then they would hold their head, they'd oh. stop playing, they'd start crying. The mother had migraine. She said, could this be migraine? The answer is absolutely this is, could be mine, but they just can't tell us that. Right. If, if kids could tell us exactly what was going on, our jobs as parents would be a whole lot easier. It would be a lot easier, absolutely. For sure. So it really takes awareness as a parent. Hey, I have this in my history. I need to watch out for it with my kid. Absolutely. So what are the things that we can be looking for 
So in reality, in, in young kids, sometimes migraine is headache with no other symptoms. And then as they get older, they may progress on to the nausea, the vomiting, the visual changes, the other things associated with it. You know, the, the, the kids have headaches for lots of reasons. You know, we think about headache associated with the flu. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a headache with a viral illness and then it goes away. When kids have headaches that are frequent, and to me frequent is typically more than a couple times a month, you have to start thinking, is this more than just you know, an occasional headache associated with a virus or something like that. Right. And, and again, I always go back to family history. If the family history is there and kids start complaining of headaches, take it seriously. They're not trying to get out of school. They're not trying to get out of things. Again, from my own experience, kids can have headaches and we have to take right. them seriously. Absolutely, we do. And you, um, let's, you mentioned you diagnosed a nine month old. So really, there's not really an age that these are typically going to start? You know, it, it, it runs the gamut. I, I think the probably the, the primary age in kids that we see an increase or presentation of headaches is somewhere between 10 and 13. When we look back at all the kids we've seen, that's probably our peak age. Would that have to do with hormonal Everybody shifts? Everybody wants to think it's hormones, but you know, I it think it's Sounds it's logical. More. It does, I think it's a factor. I also think it's a factor that when you get to be 10 to 13, you become more aware of yourself mm -hmm. and your environment and social media and, and stress school and anxiety and stress. creeps I think in. It's a, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. It, it all piles on and just... It does. Boom. So are there any differences in kids' symptoms versus adults? Do they typically present the same way? The, the classic migraine, the answer is yes. There are lots of different types of headaches under, other than migraine. Um, kids can have typical migraine with nausea, vomiting, light noise sensitivity, and they can also have headache where they have no other symptoms other than head pain. And that's probably, for me and my patient population, the most common thing that I see. I, I, I rarely see a child who has classic migraine that happens once a month. Most of the time their pediatrician or family practice doctor feels very comfortable taking care of that. Mm -hmm. By the time I see them, they either have atypical headaches or more frequent headaches or they failed what they thought was appropriate management. And so they come to us mainly realistically because the parents are concerned, could there be something bad causing these headaches? And, and when I sit down after we have taken the history and done the physical exam, the first thing I always say is, there's no way this can be anything bad. And most of the time, we don't need to do tests to prove that they don't have a brain tumor or a pseudotumor. It's really, really based on the story. So a lot of times we see kids mainly for reassurance. Not, mm -hmm. I can't, I, there's nothing I do that a, a pediatrician family practice can right. do as far as prescribed medicine, but sometimes it takes that yeah, don't worry. We don't need to go do right. expensive tests to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. We need that peace of mind Absolutely, from an expert 100%. that it is a migraine. There's not a parent that I've ever seen that walks in the room and says, I'm worried this is a brain tumor, but I promise you in the back of their minds, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm worried there's something wrong like oh, a brain sure. tumor. Absolutely. I've been that parent. Are Agreed. you sure this isn't something terrible? Because I Googled it. And it told me it was something terrible. Absolutely. Every single time. Absolutely. It's always the worst case scenario. So you mentioned, you know, when they do come to you, at what point would a parent say, okay, this is more than just a headache. We need to see a specialist. So to me, it's, it's how severe the headaches are, how frequently they have them, and how they impact the child's life. Yep. So to me, if you're having consistently more than one or two headaches a week, you're probably starting to overuse over-the-counter medications. Mm -hmm. Even if they're effective, you can use too much. Right. It can actually cause medication overuse or rebound headache. Or the child's missing a lot of school. Or their life is dysfunctional because they're missing activities because of frequent headaches. So frequent headaches, severe headaches, those are the ones that we usually see. And what would you consider a severe headache? Like, say it doesn't reach the point of a migraine. Maybe the kid's able to be up and walk around, but they're just constantly in pain. Would you consider that a... You know, I think, I think everyone... I, I had a psychologist that worked with me for a long time, and, and he didn't... This is probably a well-known saying, but 
pain is pain, suffering is optional. I, I see some kids who have headaches every day that I would say are probably moderate to severe, never miss a day of school, never miss football practice. And then I see a lot of kids who have fairly minor headaches that miss 30 days of school. So I think a lot of it is, is how the person handles their pain. And, and you know, I'll see kids that'll get uh, teenagers, especially come to the clinic, I'll say, how often are you having headaches? They'll say every day. And the mother will say, you're not having headaches every day. And say, yes, I just don't tell you I have headaches right. every day. They just tough so it out. It, they do. Unfortunately, 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 they have right. learned to deal with things that they can't control. But a lot of times when people learn that, they don't reach out for help because they don't think they need help Absolutely. until it's hitting them and they're nauseous and especially if they've had headaches for a while they think well this is the way it's supposed life is supposed to be and right you don't know any different you think everybody wakes up with a headache every day this is just normal absolutely and that is why migraine awareness month is incredibly important because we are taking that away this isn't normal and you should reach out for help there are way too many ways to help and and you know one of the biggest one of the biggest issues it's easy to treat headaches. Mm. What's difficult to treat is all the cofactors associated with headaches. Poor sleep, stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. poor nutrition, lack of hydration. You know, I, I always tell them when we're treating a headache, I'm putting the piece, pieces of a puzzle together mm -hmm. and medicine is a piece and sleep is a piece and anxiety relief is a piece. If I miss a piece or two, you're not gonna have a very nice picture there. Right. So it's not as easy as here take this magic pill and do anything you want to. Right. It's take appropriate medication, but we eat right, we sleep well, we hydrate, we exercise, and we work on our stress. That, that hydrating is a very important point because I suffer from migraines. I haven't in years, but I do get frequent headaches. And I notice when I am drinking enough water, they happen a lot less. Absolutely, and I always encourage my athletes, especially during the summertime, oh, yeah. you need to drink before, during, and after any activity. We need to keep the tank full because if you get dehydrated, there are things that happen in your body as a response that are sometimes triggers for headaches. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got to do everything appropriately. What are some common triggers for headaches in kids? You know, um, I don't think anyone knows the answer to that. Really? Again, most triggers are retrospective. You get a headache and you say, what did I eat? What did I do? What did I... Oh, oh, I ate this. It must have done that. No, you've eaten that a hundred times and I've gotten a headache. I think to me, for us migraine or headache sufferers, there is a almost like a pain thermostat and ours doesn't function as well as people that mm -hmm. don't have the gene. And I think it's several things added together that lower that threshold to trigger a headache where people without the gene, that doesn't happen. So, right. you know, if, if you look at the patients that I see that have frequent headaches, and unfortunately, almost three fourths of the patients we see have headaches every day. The two biggest issues continue to be poor sleep and stress, and they just add together. If you don't sleep right. well, you're more stressed. If you're more stressed, you have more headaches. If you're more stressed, you don't sleep well. We right. get on a merry-go-round, we can't hamster get off wheel. Of Absolutely. And then all those triggers that aren't really technically triggers, probably you already have a little bit of a headache Absolutely. and they kind of flare it up. Absolutely. Mine is smells. Heavy perfumes, immediately I'll start. But it's probably because I didn't sleep well the night before it, and I'm already prone. You're exactly right. Right? It's, it's an additive effect. All right. So let's, let's two things I want to ask you and then we'll wrap up. How can a parent who knows that they have a kid with a migraine, how can they watch for it? How do they know it's coming? Because there are often things that happen to let you know as a person that you've got one coming on, but how can a parent watch out for that? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, especially my young kids. I'll have parents tell me, I can look at them and tell they're having a headache whether they say they have a headache or not. And to me, it's always, they become more reserved, they become more quiet. They want to take a nap in the middle of the afternoon, which is real unusual. Mm -hmm. They get more fussy, more irritable especially younger kids, those to me, before they say, I have a headache, those are the things that I always look for. And what can a parent do to, once they do have a migraine, what can we do to relieve symptoms, you know, outside of medications and? Well, you know, for true migraine, the body's way to fix itself is to put itself to sleep. Yes. Part of the problem with that is sometimes your head hurts so bad you can't sleep, and right. I've been there. And so to me, it's usually a, 
cool, quiet, dark room. Um, you know, try over-the-counter medications if you want to. Fortunately now, there are so many better ways to treat headaches medication-wise. And I always tell people, I'm not here to sell medicine. I'm mm -hmm. here to try to do what we can to relieve your symptoms right. to where your life is, is what it needs to be. But we have very good medications with most of the time very few side effects that are very effective and at least controlling. We can't cure, but we can control. Now, are there preventative medications for kids once it gets to you know a certain point? Absolutely are. We have a host of medications. There's a small list that we choose from. Our goal ultimately is to make sure that what we're doing with medicines isn't worse than what the headaches are themselves. Right. So we try to choose, th choose things that have been around for a while, that have some evidence, that have relatively few side effects. Again, my rule of thumb is if you're having more than two headaches a week on a consistent basis, it's probably time to treat that cycle with daily medicines. When I put someone on daily medicines, my goal is to break the cycle, make the headaches go away, headache free for several months, then we stop the medicine and wait for the next cycle. So I never put someone on daily medicines forever. It's because these headaches are causing you dysfunction. Let's get things back under control. Get back on track. Well, thank you so much. Now, you said that um, you suffered from migraines. Is that what got you into headache Absolutely. management for kids? Absolutely. If, if someone told me I had to take care of kids with belly pain, I would probably run. But I enjoy, I enjoy doing headaches. I've been there. I've done that. I see what they are. And, and it's so exciting compared to when I was young. We had aspirin. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting to see the advances in the treatment of headaches, not just medication, but biofeedback, stress management, there's lots and lots of ways to get things under control. So, you know, someone should not have to suffer from headaches. Right. We ought to be able to help them to get past that to where the headaches don't interfere with things. And you're able to empathize with them in a way that a non sufferer wouldn't be able to do, potentially. Been there, done that. I think that's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank uh, you. We're in this clinic is less than a year old, is that right? A it little is. over a year. It's beautiful. And you're down here a couple of days a week? I'm here three days a week, and I'm at Children's Hospital two days a week. Uh, and you do general pediatrics as well? I do as general the... pediatrics. I'm, I'm one of those people that I have to have variety or mm -hmm. I get bored. Spice of life. And I just, I love primary care, but I also love the time that I do with the headache patients. Do you find yourself, when you're with a general pediatric patient, are you looking for headaches? Like, how oh, yeah. is this? Oh yeah, my colleagues tell back. me. My colleagues tell me I think everything's a migraine, and I think a lot of things are my. I think colic in a two-month-old is probably migraine. They just can't tell us that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm a little more aware of that just because I see a lot of kids who have never been diagnosed that there's no question in my mind that's what's going on. Great doctor all around. You cover well, all I the bases. Doing everything. That's yeah. right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you guys for joining us. It's Migraine Awareness Month. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and we'll see if Dr. Elsor can answer them at a later date. Be happy to. Have a great day. Thank you.